Lucius is a young and emotional boy who lacks conviction and doesn't know what he wants to do in life. Lucius lives with his grandfather and mother after his father passed away in a scaffolding accident. His grandfather takes him to a bathhouse and tells him that the bathhouse was designed by him and renovated by Lucius' father. He goes underwater in an attempt to escape Titus who often bullies him, but he somehow teleports to a new bathhouse. He panics and hits his head sending him back. His grandfather explains to Lucius how important the bathhouse is to Rome, how they help restore the mind and body, and bring joy to the people. He gains conviction and decides to become a Thermi architect just like his father after Titus insults his family's legacy. His grandfather is proud and tells him to heal people with his bathhouses. Years later, Lucius is a grown man and an architect after completing his studies in Athens. He is back in Rome to continue his family's legacy and build bathhouses. He meets Titus in the bathhouse, and Titus apologizes for disrespecting his family's work. In 128 AD, Rome expanded its territory, becoming prosperous, and it is ruled by Emperor Hadrian. This era of peace known as Pax Romana makes new architects compete with each other, bringing new innovations in hopes of being the best. However, Lucius struggles to come up with new ideas for Thermi architecture. He loses his job because his ideas are outdated. He becomes depressed and decides to leave the architecture industry. He goes to a bathhouse with his friend, Marcus, and admires the design of the Thermi. He dives underwater and ponders if he can ever come up with new innovative ideas for bathhouses. He finds a drain and he is sucked in. He emerges out of the water and finds himself in a new bathhouse in modern Japan. He assumes it is a bathhouse for slaves, as he cannot understand their language. He is amazed by the new innovations and decides to implement them in Rome, in order to gain the admiration of the people. He tastes a fruit-flavored milk drink and he loves it. He wakes up and assumes it was all a dream, but he spots the bottle of the drink and quickly realizes it was not a dream. Later on, he implements the new ideas and becomes a famous architect, although he believes there is so much more he has to learn. He finds out the drain is being demolished and decides to go back for new ideas. Several years have passed, and Lucius Modestus is seen drinking with Marcus and looks sad because his wife wants him to take time off. Lucius receives a letter from the consul Lepidus, requiring his assistance with an urgent matter. The consul tells him to be present at his villa tomorrow, but Lucius realizes his wife would be angry with him, as they already made plans. He arrives at the villa the next day, and he meets Lepidus an old man who is sick. Lepidus asks Lucius for Lucius to build a bath outside for him, to live out the rest of his days. He wants the bath outside, because of the beautiful painting of Mount Vesuvius he saw in one of Lucius' thermi. He wants to live his remaining days staring at the real Mount Vesuvius in his bathhouse. He thinks deeply on how to construct the thermi. Regulus tells him that there is a natural spring he can use as a water source. The water in the spring is warm, and he tries to find the source of the heat but he falls into the water and ends up in Japan again. He finds himself in a hot spring, and he finds out that they have a separate bath for monkeys and humans. He tries to learn as much as he can about this advanced civilization, and he wonders if he can get here at will if he goes underwater. He discovers how to build an open-air bathhouse by draining water into the river using a wooden pipe. He tries an egg boiled by the spring and sake. He enjoys it so much and admits the Romans are less advanced than these people. He executes the ideas at once and builds Lepidus a bathhouse. Afterward, Lucius is amazed at the recovery of Lepidus, and he has gotten married. Lepidus claims Lucius's idea of eating eggs and taking wine saved his life. Lucius is shocked to find a monkey in the bath. Every stonemason, including Marcus, is busy making multiple sculptures of Antonus. Antonus was the emperor's lover but was killed by an alligator. Marcus always brings his master to the bathhouse, because he can barely walk and needs support. The old man talks about having an indoor bathhouse, and Lucius believes it is possible. Lucius dives underwater to retrieve the old man's strigil which is a tool used to scrape dirt off one's body believes it is outdated and needs to be replaced with something modern. He tries to get back up, but he couldn't. The water gets hotter, and he ends up in a bathtub in the modern world. He soon realizes that there is a lot more he doesn't know, and figures out how the hot water is preserved in the bathtub. He once again feels ashamed because of their advanced technology. He is mistaken to be the caretaker coming to help the owner of the house with his bath. He is overwhelmed by all the modern tools used in an indoor bathhouse as the old man teaches him how it is used. He is given a fizzy drink, which he gulps down. He wakes up and brings back a scrubbing towel with him. 
the emperor's messenger comes to check the sculptures of Antinous and discovers the indoor bathhouse built by Lucius. He is intrigued and tells the emperor. Upon hearing this amazing invention, the emperor decides to return home from Egypt and meet Lucius. Lucius is on his way to meet the emperor, but he is nervous and feels sick. He arrives at the emperor's villa designed by the emperor himself. His stomach starts acting up again, but he holds it in. The emperor has a moat in his villa, and Lucius marvels at the design and size. He is told he has to see the emperor alone, as no one is allowed to enter without being punished. But he is an exception. He meets the emperor, and he praises his works, putting Lucius at ease. He tells Lucius that he is interested in keeping peace and expanding territories, but the senate is against it. He wants Lucius to build a personal bathing room in his moat as he hates having to leave to have a bath. Lucius asks why he did not ask Apologurus to help him out, as he is an excellent architect under the emperor. Hadrian tells him that Apologurus no longer works for him because all his ideas are outdated. Lucius enters the pool trying to figure out the entrance and exit of the water. He finds himself in a toilet of a showroom as he is back in Japan. He meets a woman that works at the showroom, and she explains the modern technology of a bathroom. He sees a TV and believes it is an aquarium built into the walls. He uses the toilet and discovers that it has an auto-flush function, and it is automated. He recreates what he has learned and the Emperor likes it and asks Lucius to follow him to Jerusalem which Lucius agrees. Hadrian is in Jerusalem, and the people have been revolting for the past three years because Hadrian tried to build a new town in Jerusalem. The soldiers fighting in the war are poisoned by the rebels, but there is no bathhouse to help them heal. Lucius is almost finished with a new spring. Apologurus praises Lucius and tells him his grandfather would be proud of him. Lucius hurts his back trying to help out and falls into the spring. He wakes up in a healing spa, and he is made to lie down because of his back pain. He realizes that the ground is warm, and they built the lodge on a ground that heats up geothermally. He discovers the lodge is for people who need healing physically, and the warm ground is responsible for this. He eats stewed bamboo shoots and drinks expired sake, but he thinks the sake is poison. They give him hot spring water to help him recover, but he thinks they want to kill him. The water has sodium which has a detoxifying effect. He replicates the healing lodge and heals the soldiers. They win the war all thanks to the healing spa and Lucius becomes the emperor's exclusive architect. Lucius returns to Rome to see his wife. On his way to Rome, he stops at a tavern. He is disgusted by the poor hospitality of the tavern. The food is bad, and the bathroom is poorly maintained. He slips and falls while trying to have his bath. He finds himself in an inn that houses both men and females. He is shocked and tries to leave. He is given a robe and he is told to stay in the inn for the night. He returns to the inn and receives good reception. A woman who works in the inn teaches him how to use a chopstick, and he enjoys the meal. He is taken to his room and finds out that it can be used as a workplace, and as a place to sleep. He feels much better and relaxed. He no longer feels the fatigue of the journey. The employee tries to seduce Lucius, but he slips back to his time. He applies his knowledge and renovates the tavern. The emperor stops by the tavern and enjoys the services rendered. He finds out it was the work of Lucius. Marcus and Titus talk about Lucius and his impact on the Thermi industry. Lucius makes repairs to a bathhouse his grandfather built and his father provided maintenance for. Lucius tells the owner that a full renovation is required, but the bathhouse is going to be closed down due to poor sales. This is due to the arrival of some foreign soldiers with poor regard for the bathhouse rules. He confronts the foreigners, but he is punched in the face by one of them and he plunges into the water. He is back in Japan and he is impressed by their dedication and respect for the bathhouses. The soldiers are also teleported to the bathhouse in Japan. They disturb the peace of the bathhouse. They fight with Lucius and he is furious with their attitude. He decides to have a duel with one of them, and they are evenly matched. He teaches them how to properly use a bath using the pictures on the wall. These pictures show the rules, and the foreigners understand the etiquette of the bathhouse. Lucius is back, and he has Marcus make stone sculptures stating the rules. Marcus comes with a new stone, and Titus comes in with his son who aspires to be an architect. They decide to have a bath together. Lucius is summoned by the Augustale Society, a group of emaciated slaves for a job. He is accompanied by Marcus who begs him to take the job. They meet the leader of the Augustale Society and are taken to an open space. They are given the plans of the bathhouse. His plan involves building a golden bathhouse with lots of vulgar details. Lucius hesitates, but Marcus convinces him to take the job. Lucius doubts the people would like the golden bathhouse. The leader infuriates him by saying after the emperor dies, 
he can work for him. Lucius tells him off and tumbles into the water. An architect is asked to renovate Tsukumi Hot Spring Inn into an ancient Roman-themed bathhouse. The owner has some crazy ideas that are not found in ancient Rome bathhouses. Lucius meets the architect and decides to help him out. He rejects the plan and makes a new design drawing inspiration from the moon and the temple on his shirt. He teleports back while he washes face. The renovation is a success. It combines luxury and simplicity giving it a traditional and western look paying homage to Princess Diana. Lucius applies the same knowledge and builds a beautiful bathhouse. The emperor adopts a son to rule the empire. His name is Lucius alias Caesar. The senate requests Lucius to visit the emperor's villa. He arrives at the villa, devastated because his wife left him. Lucius sees a man being obscene in a public place. He is disgusted by his actions. This man turns out to be the emperor's son. The emperor requests Lucius to build a large bathhouse for Alias to solidify his claim to the throne. He goes to Baths of Trajan to receive inspiration for the new bathhouse he is about to build. He meets Apollodurus at the bathhouse and they go inside together. Lucius asks for tips that could help him with his construction. Apollodurus tells him. But Lucius does not have respect for Alias because he is a womanizer. They are interrupted by children playing in the bathhouse. Lucius decides to be creative and build a bathhouse for children to play in. He is hit by a child who tries to jump over him. He resurfaces in a water park and he is instantly hit by a woman. He finds out that nudity is not a thing here, and the waterfall is not meant for relaxation. He discovers they have a different pool for each age bracket, and concludes that it is a training facility. He tries the massage chair, and he is given a fruit-flavored milk drink. He decides to try the waterfall. He decides to build a bathhouse with the help of Marcus for adults and children in order to train them. The waterfall starts to cause an argument between the adults and children, but a boy named Marcus versus settles the dispute. Marcus is very intelligent. He figures out how the slides and pool works. It is revealed he was chosen to be the next emperor, but he is too young. Marcus has all it takes to rule, unlike Alias who is only gifted in decision making. The Emperor plans to let Alias rule till Marcus comes of age to take over the Empire, but to do that the people have to trust Alias, and that is the reason for the construction of the bathhouse. Alias comes up with a plan that allows everyone to enjoy the waterfall. Everyone is happy and Lucius believes the future of Rome is in good hands. The Senate doesn't want Alias to rule. They believe he will continue the peaceful reign of Hadrianus instead of expanding their territories. They decide to plot against the Emperor by sabotaging the bathhouses that make people happy. And they want to achieve this by getting rid of Lucius who is still sad because his wife left him. The Senate sends him to the hot spring on Mount Vesuvius. He is attacked by bandits, but they let him go after they find out he wants to build a bathhouse. The bandits help him clear the hot spring and he gets into the water. The bandits are not satisfied with the hot spring as Lucius promised them a treasure. Lucius dives into the water and appears in Japan. He appears in a town in the mountains. He steals a kimono. The town makes a fortune by having a hot spring and selling food and souvenirs. He returns the kimono and exchanges real silver for their currency. He enters a shop and buys instant ramen. He likes the taste and the fact that it is instant. He pays with paper money. He builds a town with the help of the bandits and put them in charge. The emperor rewards him by happily getting him reunited with his wife. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.